Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Can IoT Live Up to the Hype Within Your Facility? I'm Ann Cosgrove, the Editor-in-Chief of Facility Executive Magazine, and this webinar is presented by Blue Pillar. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. First, please note the control panel that is on your screen. This is where you can submit questions via that question box in the panel. Uh, you can send those in at any time, and your, the speakers will address them after the presentation. Also, please note the orange arrow on the left side of your control panel. Clicking on that arrow will either expand or collapse the panel, so please be sure it's expanded so you can access the question box during and after the presentation. Uh, now, I'd like to introduce you to your speakers today, Todd Kraus and Kevin Terwilliger. Todd is Chief Commercial Officer of Blue Pillar, a position in which he leads the company's global sales, marketing, and operations organizations to strengthen customer relationships. Todd brings two decades of experience in the energy industry managing commercial business initiatives at leading companies like General Electric and Enernoc. At Enernoc, Todd was Vice President of Global Utility Sales, and in a prior position there was, respons there was responsible for Enernoc's business development activities with commercial and industrial customers. During his time at Enernoc, Todd helped to establish the company as a leader in commercial and industrial demand response. He holds an undergraduate degree in geo-environmental engineering from Penn State University. Your second speaker today is Kevin Terwilliger, and he is the solution manager for the IoT division at Dell, where he leads vertical strategy and the creation of a use case specific blueprint to help customers realize return on investment quicker on IoT deployments. He has been at Dell for eight years and has completed roles in product design, customer experience, and sales enablement. He has 25 patents for innovative customer solutions and also has an MBA from the Macomb School of Business. By leveraging his experience interacting with customers across the product development process, Kevin identifies vertical use cases which provide opportunities for the IoT to meaningfully impact customers' businesses. Uh, before I hand it over, I would like to mention if you experience a technical difficulty at any time, please also send a message to us in that question section and we'll address it right away. Uh, now without further ado, I'll hand it over to Todd. Todd, welcome. Wonderful. Thank you, Anne. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be connected with you all. I'm really excited for this uh, this time together. I happen to be on the East Coast today, so it's 2 o'clock. It's a little bit beyond that post-lunch um, doldrum, but for those in Central or on the West Coast, we're going to do everything we can to make this interesting and engaging. And of course, we'll lean on all of you to uh, to participate. The more questions, the more engagement, certainly the more more learnings for everyone. Um, so welcome, and thanks for attending the session. Uh, obviously, the name describes what we're going to talk about. Can IoT live up to the hype in your facility? And IoT is, is a pretty frequently used term these days. For those new to it, it's, it stands for the Internet of Things. But the real question is, how exactly is technology being applied within IoT frameworks within facilities? So interestingly enough, today there's well over 7 million energy things, energy assets sitting behind the meter within the facilities around the globe. They run businesses, they run and maintain critical infrastructure, and they're responsible for powering really the breadth of our world. And this ranges from hospitals to government facilities to large communication facilities. Really everything we do is somehow impacted by these devices and these networks. And until recently, there was a lack of real-time control and visibility. And because of that, these things existed in an environment that were less safe, less efficient, and ultimately less productive. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. The good news is I do not have to use the prompt yet for technical difficulties. So here's the agenda. We're going to talk about some of the mega energy trends impacting facilities. We're going to define what is the difference between a smart building versus IoT. We're going to talk about security. This is a very top of mind and important topic and something that is fairly new to a lot of folks that might be on the call. And then finally, we're going to give some recommendations and pointers for how to get started and champion IoT within a facility environment. You only have to turn on the news for about five minutes to realize that energy within our world is changing rapidly. 
of course, it, it certainly helps that we're in the midst of an election year where this is a top topic of frequent discussion. But if you look at what's happened just over the last 12 months or so, if you think about global climate change and the rapid evolution of regulations, 190 countries met in 2015 in Paris and agreed to make very serious uh, commitments towards reducing the impacts of climate change. This occurred at COP21. Furthermore, if you look at the changing environment around how energy markets function, we actually have seen an increase by over 200% in the number of utilities that offer real-time or dynamic-based pricing. And then as a result of that, we're seeing a great adoption of distributed energy and then a very rapid evolution and emergence of, of IoT. A few more trends, just to kind of get your mind working as some of these things are not as obvious in our day-to-day, -day, but I think when you hear the stats, you'll probably think of specific use cases in your world where these things might ring very, very true. We've seen 400% increase in the adoption of behind the meter gener generation. This was recently coined as the evolution of the prosumer. This is a consumer who is now also producing their own energy. 79% of organizations believe that achieving their energy management goals will make them a more competitive organization. That said, only 5% of those organizations have engaged in developing a tool set to help them be successful in this pursuit. Pretty amazing trends, trends that are changing rapidly, and we fully expect to see these continue to evolve very quickly in the future months and years. The renewable landscape is something that we can't ignore any longer. There was a belief that it was something that was being pursued at a variety of levels for recognition, PR reasons, but we're seeing as a result in many ways because of regulations, we're seeing companies really move towards a triple bottom line. And they're making very, very strong and very, very public statements and commitments to the type of energy that they want to consume, the type of organi organizations that they want to be, and the type of people that their brands represent. What you see here is just a few examples of companies that have committed to 100% consumption of renewable energy within a very near term. So hopefully that lays the groundwork a little bit of the world in which we're in uh, from an energy perspective. It's changing rapidly as is the technology, which brings us to the next section, which is what is the difference between smart buildings and the internet, internet of things and IoT? I'm sure many on the, on the call and looking at the screen can relate to what I'm about to talk about, which is that buildings are just smarter. There is no question about it that if you look at the last decade or the last couple of decades, the infrastructure that's being installed in buildings is much smarter than what was used 10 years ago or 20 years ago, and in many cases, just 24 months ago. The equipment that you use is literally smart equipment, meaning it's digital, it's able to gather data faster, and it's actually able in some cases to come to conclusions that can help you in a variety of ways. Terms that describe this in some cases might be things such as machine learning, you hear that a lot, or artificial intelligence. Personally, when I hear artificial intelligence, I think of, I think of a variety of things re ranging from feature films to sci-fi thrillers, but we actually live in that world. And things such as smart water controllers, smart energy, better fire and safety, all of these things have these capabilities within your facilities. And from these, you are realizing some of the benefits of the technical evolution that we're experiencing. That said, while these are all, in most cases, really great and really valuable point solutions, they're still very, very siloed, and they're not ultimately connected. And really, that's what the IoT vision is. It's to take these point solutions, develop and build them into a network so that they're very connected 
and can work in concert. So really to reach true IoT status, there's four things that are required. Number one, all things must be connected. Number two, the data from all of these things must be able to be shared across these solutions into a common system. Finally, if you take it even up one more level, the data needs to be able to be shared outside of single sites. Aggregating data within a site is something that many pieces of technology can do. They can do it very well. But going from the site level to more of a portfolio level within a campus, for example, and building towards a centralized facilities management view is very challenging. And then finally, to come back to the security mention, there are security problems that have plagued smart buildings in recent times, and these must be fixed, and these vulnerabilities must be addressed. And IoT is a, a very clear solution for doing so. And so that's really what the IoT environment is built to do. It's built to bridge these gaps, the gaps that occur between smart devices and a truly connected and networked environment that is very secure. A truly effective IoT solution connects anything, in our words, in our minds, that stores, measures, consumes, generates, or even switches energy. And this can range from the very simple to the very complex, and it can be done in a very standardized way. As a result, we eliminate very expensive customized projects. So I think the IoT, in, for me, is very relatable within my personal world a Nest thermostat, a smart thermostat within the home. You install it, the IP address is enabled, and instantly on your smart home, on your smartphone, you can make adjustments. In many cases, in the Nest case, it makes adjustments for you. It literally makes the environment more productive. That environment is something that's evolving very quickly. However, the facility environment within the walls of a CNI facility is much more complex. There's much more legacy equipment, and it's frankly just much more difficult to achieve the same outcome. When we think of IoT and the underlying network, we think of these solutions as platforms, not point solutions. They work in a very open environment with open protocols to connect to a variety of devices while having full understanding of modern API, internet protocols, and systems that can also be enabling mechanisms for third-party applications. So think of, if you think of the underlying IoT network as being similar or equal to your smartphone, from there you can layer on applications and various tools to achieve your desired outcomes, to utilize the data, Again, going back to your smartphone analysis, taking data from a device that's maybe a wearable and converting that to very actionable information. It's a great comparative to the IoT infrastructure. And then finally, what you see in front of you is, is actually probably the real challenge and the hardest part of IoT and the connectivity, which is starting at a local level and then scaling even to a global scale. And that's one of the promises of IoT over smart buildings. So what does this really mean? It means that sites can be easily connected into a system of systems that works for hundreds of sites across time zones, across dispersed geography. It allows for easy reconciliation of data, and it allows that data to be managed and displayed in a way that allows us to make sense of it ranging from the facility manager all the way to a headquarters personnel or team within a different country. This is the true flexibility of the Internet of Things and this is the true flexibility of the Blue Pillar Aurora network that we, we work to deliver to folks like, like yourselves, quite frankly. In many ways, a lot of us have maybe used business intelligence or BI tools that's what this is ultimately. It's taking all of the data from all of the devices and being able to bring it into a BI environment that allows you to really make it actionable and usable. At Blue Pillar, we actually believe that we are the only 
IoT platform to connect all energy things. And this means that we can drive a number of outcomes to map to just about any facility manager's goals. It's interesting, we actually got our start by working with, in the healthcare vertical, with critical care hospitals and helping them avoid power outages by connecting their emergency power management systems. But in doing so, we, we quickly recognized that there were other markets and other verticals that needed similar capabilities. This evolved our work into cable and wireless providers. And eventually we've learned that these companies, as well as critical infrastructures around large dispersed entities, such as departments of transportation, they all have similar needs around resiliency. They all need to avoid outages and they all have fleets of devices and generation assets that benefit greatly from networking in an IoT environment. And finally, we're seeing significant traction more recently in university and in military environments. Military especially is always working towards increasing site level resiliency and leveraging the IoT capabilities of the Aurora network from Blue Pillar is one of the ways they're doing this, both domestically and then more broadly across the globe. So as a result, we can now drive energy savings, we can strengthen resiliency, we can help facilitate facilities automate their participation in energy programs such as demand response. And we're pretty proud because recently we were actually awarded the title number one in microgrid en enablement by Navigant Research for having the largest portfolio of microgrid capacity in the world. So it's early, early days in this area, but we are very excited to continue to evolve our capabilities and deliver our technology as an enabler around this new world of distributed energy resources. So let me walk you through very briefly just a couple very specific use cases, how these facilities are connected and what some of the outcomes have been. So what you see in front of you specifically is a, a hospital customer at that site, there were 175, or actually it's a campus, generators connected, 1,000 meters, 800 switches. So we're talking a lot of devices. And from that, they've realized significant increase in resiliency. They've actually seen an increase in their manpower capacity. And what I mean by that is they're delivering an IoT environment which ultimately makes their people more productive. Instead of having to do a lot of manual work around these assets, it's automated. It's in a network. It allows them to leverage that network capability to make them more effective and more productive at their job. And then finally, it's helped them determine best practices across facilities within a portfolio to realize and maintain fairly significant energy reductions and savings. What you see now is really a, a CNI customer, and in a similar scenario, they engage with Blue Pillar really with the desire to automate the participation in grid-sponsored energy programs, specifically demand response across multiple sites. And certainly, they have realized significant revenue from these, these programs and the participation, but they've also realized that they've had a drastic increase in reliability from a power outage management perspective. They've leveraged the platform to find even new use cases where they can better manage their high use equipment through load management, load shedding, and they're aspiring to much more aggressively manage their energy consumption in a dynamic marketplace, such as the ones we described early in the conversation. And my final example, which is pretty cool, is a, a recent microgrid deployment that we were involved with, which included a variety of assets, um, boilers, combined heat and power, multiple solar arrays with varying types of equipment, multiple types of inverters, for example. And we were able to be the underlying IoT network of all these devices, bring them together very, very rapidly um, we deployed this in, in a time frame measured in days and weeks. In most cases, it's months, 
and usually the number of months <laughs> runs into double digits and at a fraction of the cost of many traditional networking systems. So I mentioned it earlier, um, and it's an important enough topic that I want to come back to it, and that topic is cybersecurity. So hold on to your hats, everyone that's just finishing lunch. This is ultra exciting. I, I, I joke, but I actually am pretty serious. This is, this is an important topic, and you know, from our perspective, it's virtually impossible to be part of a Fortune 1000 company or a high profile brand or a company with a conscience for that matter and not think about security. This is part of an overall risk mitigation strategy that all businesses are adopting today and will continue to evolve very, very rapidly. What you see are just some simple recent examples of highly publicized cyber attacks. And interestingly enough, and I don't know that it was made very clear in the press, most of these happened through the building control systems as an entry point. This was certainly the case for Target and Google. And so what this really says to me, and, and maybe it'll resonate with everyone on the, the call as well, that this is a new world we're living in. Those that are looking to inflict difficulties and damage into the corporate environment are smarter than they've ever been. They're more talented at accessing systems than they've ever been. And as a result, those of us on the line need to be more thoughtful about how we manage our infrastructure and our data. The great news is that there are some very clear steps, steps that you can take to minimize the impact of security concerns and manage them proactively. And these are just a few of those steps in front of you. We're certainly happy to expand on this uh, as we go through the conversation or even in a point of follow-up. Beyond utilizing a process around managing security, we're excited because when we look at the next generation of IoT networks, such as the Aurora platform, it's very exciting because it is purpose-built to manage the security risks of today's environment and the future environment where those requirements are only going to incre increase. Um, we have found that there are just a necessary amount of features that are required to deliver the right amount of security and the right amount of peace of mind to organizations that aspire to utilize these networks to achieve their ultimate business objectives. So now that you've kind of seen the world of IoT and where it's moving within the realm of the energy environment, how do you, how do you make this part of your strategy? You might be asking yourself, Wow, how do I how do I take that this back to my organization is something that we need to think through and think about what are the various value drivers that we can achieve through utilizing this new technology. First, I guess it's very important that we help you realize that IoT is just good for your business. And it's good for your business because as an open platform, it is intended to drive down costs and take advantage of economies of scale. It's amazing the rapid changes that we're seeing in hardware and data processing, not only from capabilities, but cost. And as a result, we're seeing the same impact on the overall network. Innovations in data management and streamlined installation of these gateways means you can rapidly take advantage of changes that will benefit your facility. So ultimately, it's how do I leverage technology in a way that is that, that makes my world better, that it allows for ease of entry within these new markets, and which can adopt and adapt to your business as it evolves. Those questions aren't really all that easy to answer, and the good news is that we've got a team that is thrilled to help you think through your specific use cases. And 
we believe pretty strongly that no one understands how to do this better than the team of Dell and Blue Pillar and quite frankly your IT organization. Most IT departments are actually actively advocating for open IoT platforms and it's been something that they've been doing for some time. We actually find that where adoption is the greatest, there is a deep partnership between the building or facility teams and their IT team and that they're working very clearly together to align around goals and objectives and desired outcomes. So while the IT team may not understand facilities and they might not be expert around energy management the way some of the folks on this call might be, they do very well understand the principles and potentials of IoT. This is something that for them as students in the IT space, they're focused on and hearing a lot about and more than likely learning a lot about. So we deeply encourage that partnership. We encourage you to take advantage of their knowledge base, of their strengths, and to help facilitate these conversations. We've actually put together an IT ebook to help bridge the gap and explain why they should be excited about facility or energy IoT. Any IoT newcomer can claim to offer connectivity. With a decade of technical experience, simplifying the complexity behind the meter, Blue Pillar speaks the language of the facility. We feel like we're at a very unique position within this market, which is the point at which what happens within the facility intersects with IoT and the IT department because we have we only have two feet, but we essentially have a foot in all of those environments and have for many, many years. And so we really do understand what it takes to connect any facility device. We also open our platform at the API level so we plug and play to any application. So we're super excited about the future. We're excited about this conversation. We are seeing great things evolve very, very quickly within our world as we work closely with our partners of Microsoft and Dell to help folks like yourself reduce complexity and take advantage of this new phenomenon that is energy IoT. So with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to my colleague at Dell, Kevin, who will outline Dell's approach to the facility and IoT space and why they are partnering with Blue Pillar. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. I'm here. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay, and my screen should be coming up right now. All right, so um, we're going to switch gears a little bit here, but really to build on top of all this that Todd has already been talking about, the real opportunity of, of IoT within your buildings. But really what I want to share with you over the, the next few minutes that I have is just to demonstrate to you that IoT has really moved beyond the hype. It's, um, it's real, it's here today, and um, there are clear solutions that you can take action around. And specifically, what I'll do in the next few minutes is walk you through Dell's strategy, how we can help you um, create partnerships between your operations technology and IT or information technology organizations within your business. And then more specifically, demonstrate to you a energy management blueprint that we've put together with Blue Pillar. Um, and so before moving forward, I'll also just want to say thanks to uh, Todd and the rest of the Blue Pillar team for, for having us here on the webinar today. Um, huge partnership between Dell and Blue Pillar. Uh, they're a key member within our IoT Solutions Partner Program, um, and, and we love working with these guys. We definitely see them as a leader within this industry around managing all these energy assets. So with that, I will um, jump forward here. The first thing that I, I, I always start off talking about, and you've probably seen this in, in other um, IoT presentations, this idea of information technology and operations technology and the fact that IoT, where IoT really has value, is the convergence between these two organizations. Operations technology is really where all of this net new data, 
all this data from all these machines, that's where it's available. Um, but to be able to take advantage of that, information technology has to partner and be able to provide the security, the governance, the manageability, so that we can take all this data and get it up into some of these other IT systems uh, and really take advantage of it. So that's great, right? Um, and a lot of times that's where the conversation ends. Yeah, we all agree information technology and operations technology, they need to work together. Um, but Dell's take on this is a little bit different. Uh, in fact, you probably know Dell as the 30 years of IT heritage that we have, um, our focus around manageability and security. But you might not know that actually Dell has 15 years of experience within our OEM division specifically customizing our technology for some of the biggest OT providers in the industry, companies like Emerson and Honeywell, and you know that list can go on and on, really running a lot of their solutions, being the technology that, that backs them. And on top of that, I mentioned this partner program already, but Dell has developed a Internet of Things partner program with more than 50 partners already that really brings substantial operations technology expertise, just like Todd just walked you through um, all of the details of the understanding that Blue Pillar has of being able to come into your environment and help you connect all of these machines to be able to get to energy efficiency. Really, we look at uh, the Internet of Things, and the greatest advantage that we believe that Dell brings is this practical approach, helping you cut through the hype and really speed up deployments and get to ROI faster. And that approach is really broken down into three different pillars. It really starts with our comprehensive standards-based portfolio. And the reason why that's so important is in a second I'll show you how the IT architecture has to change uh, to be able to take advantage of all this IoT data. And Dell has all of the pieces of that puzzle to help you unlock the data. And the choice and flexibility means that depending on their, your use case, depending on what you're trying to do, the analytics that you're trying to run, we can help you put, and put uh, compute and storage where you need it. Um, and the other thing is because we offer global scale and support as well as financing, uh, we can help you get up and going faster. Um, and we can also support you worldwide. So if you're rolling out a very broad building automation solution within your company, Obviously, Dell has the global scale to support that. But anybody who comes to you and tells you that they can do it all in IoT, um, to be honest and to be very blunt, they're lying to you. IoT is very, very broad, um, and it requires ecosystems of partners working together. Um, and so the second pillar within our strategy is this curated technology and services partner program. And the reason why that should be important to you is because Dell basically cuts through all this complexity and reduces your risk because we've gone through and curated the best partners for you already. Um, you've probably been contacted as, as facilities executives, as managers of your facilities, you've probably been contacted by many companies trying to sell you IoT solutions for your buildings, companies that you've never heard of before. You've probably also heard that there are about 300 platforms for the Internet of Things. Um, and that creates a lot of complexity when you try and figure out what's the right way to make sense of this within my organization. Uh, well, Dell basically did that for you already. We went through and curated this partner program, bringing together these partners that have deep vertical expertise, as well as partners who can provide the actual implementation and the support within your building. And then ultimately where A and B really come together here is uh, the finer, final pillar of our approach and that's these proven use case specific solution blueprints. Um, and this accelerates ROI for you because Dell has gone ahead of the market and validated a solution with our partners. So our infrastructure pieces plus our partners bring that together and validating that um, so that you can deploy it very easily within your buildings. But then it also optimizes the implementation because we've gone through the efforts of standing that up and we provide a best practices guide um, and here at the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll share a little bit of what that is, our energy management blueprint. So that the, uh, sets the foundation for our practical approach within the Internet of Things. But you might be asking, how is this different than, you know, the current data architecture that I already have? Um, and, and the answer is, 
you know, really IT architectures today just are not designed to handle all of this new data that's going to be available for, from the Internet of Things. Many analysts will say that, um, you know, 50 billion new connected devices are going to be providing data by 2020, and every analyst has a little bit different prediction. We've seen all the way up to 100 billion connected devices, but really what that means is all of these sensors, all of these machines that you see here on the left-hand side of this chart, it just doesn't make sense to backhaul, backhaul all of that data to the data center or to the cloud. Um, one, the pipes aren't big enough to get all that data back, and two, not all that data is relevant to your business. Uh, so ultimately, what we recommend when we talk to customers is to distribute analytics throughout this architecture uh, to really be able to take advantage of the data where it is and um, ultimately only backhaul the data that's particularly valuable or when there's specific events that occur uh, when you need to. And so what you're seeing here is layers of the IoT architecture. Um, and Dell is the leading infrastructure provider for the industrial Internet of Things across each of these layers. And so you see all the way to the left-hand side is where the sensors or the things are. And Dell has developed uh, what we call embedded PCs to be local controllers um, to bring intelligence into these things. Um, and those are designed for extreme environments. And so even in rugged, rugged situations, you can have these embedded PCs there to gather data and do local processing. To the right of that, what you see is, um, is the edge gateway. Um, and, and ultimately, this area really to the right of those sensors all the way up to the cloud is called the fog. Um, and the reason for that is because a lot of people think, oh, so much of the computing is going to be in the cloud. But it really isn't. In fact, Gartner came out with a report very recently that said that only about 2% of the data that's going to be created by these machines uh, is going to be stored and processed in the cloud. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite as low as 2%, uh, but that just shows you how dramatic of a difference that is than just backhauling all of it. So the edge gateway lives in this concept of the fog, aggregates data from multiple different machines and sensors, and can process that data takes advantage of what we call perishable data, data that might not be valuable after the split second when it's produced by the machine, and um, can do things like looking at um, correlation between multiple different machines, can do predictive maintenance, um, and ultimately be running analytical models to cleanse a lot of this data and get down to particular events that then it can move on to either on-premise servers or onto the cloud. And the final thing that's really important to, to note here is uh, the importance of distributing security and manageability throughout this architecture as well. Um, and so Dell's approach within the Internet of Things is to help your IT department view a gateway or an embedded PC really the same way that they view a server or a notebook. They trust it and they can secure and manage it just like other IT assets that they already have in their environment. But really just to hit this home, this idea of the edge and fog computing, um, adding compute at the edge really offers three key advantages. Uh, it enables you to do real-time decision-making through edge analytics. Again, working with all of that perishable data, getting to decisions, getting to insights for your business. It also reduces the data transfer cost. Again, you think about those 50 billion connected devices. You can think within your building of different meters and your HVAC systems and your surveillance and your lighting. And if all that starts producing data, how are you going to handle it? Uh, the gateway enables you to reduce that data uh, transfer cost by compression and cleansing. And finally, going back to what Todd was saying about security, security is so, so important here. And um, really, the edge gateway enables you to improve security and data continuity, meaning if you lose connectivity back to the cloud, you don't lose all the data that, that you were processing at that time. So it gives you that continuity of local operations. And from a security perspective, data in motion is potentially at risk. And so processing it locally by the thing ultimately means that you reduce your security concerns. And we have a ton of reasons why, um, why Dell for IoT Edge hardware. I won't spend a lot of time here 
Um, we've already talked about the IT credibility. I'll spend a second on the next slide talking about our rigorous engineering. Um, but ultimately, we talked a lot about this global scale and support. And the reason why that, again, is important, there's this um, idea within the embedded and, and gateway spaces that you tend to have to have really high minimum order quantities, um, really long lead times. And it just makes it hard to do business. It makes it hard for you to get to ROI faster. Whether you're a system integrator that's doing deployments and um, you know buying this hardware and deploying it, or if you're uh, you know inside a company and doing this internally, you want to be able to get to ROI quickly, and so Dell can help you do that. And then lastly, our financial stability and our Dell Financial Services. Uh, Dell TFS or Dell Financial Services is actually a, about a four billion dollar bank. Every year they they um, will basically put $4 billion worth of hardware on their paper. And what that means is ultimately you can either lease the hardware, you can sign up for consumption-based payments, um, or it ultimately gets you as a service consumption of these IoT solutions. It's important to be able to put these computing solutions, the edge gateway and the Meta PC, into extreme environments. We know that for you to connect up all these different assets, you're going to end up having it in an HVAC system on a rooftop or in your control room. And so Dell puts all these products through very, very extreme testing. Um, Dell has a lot of heritage in this space, actually. We've been developing rugged computing solutions, um, notebooks and servers that actually go into tanks and police cars. We've been doing that for about 12 years now. But I just show you this because these are the uh, 10 different stations that we put these products through. Very, very rigorous testing from thermal shock um, to vibration, as well as ingress protection around dust and water. But I said at the beginning, and, and really anybody who tells you that they can do all this themselves is lying, just like I said before. And so partners are really the bridge um, on top of our ingredients, our infrastructure, that bring us through to these vertical solutions. So partners like Blue Pillar, who have the vertical expertise, and it can actually show up at your building and do the deployment, who can complete an on-site survey and get you up, and, up to speed running. Um, Dell wants to be the enabler for the industry leaders like Blue Pillar, and that's why we've developed a partnership with them. You can actually see Blue Pillar's profile on our partner site if you go to dellIoTPartners.com, as well as see some of our other partners around security and analytics if you're interested in seeing them. And really where this all comes together, this idea of A plus B equals C here, of our Dell infrastructure plus our curated partner software and hardware ultimately comes together into these validated use case specific solution blueprints. And that helps you get to ROI quicker with the, because they're already validated. It helps you reduce deployment risk because we give you best practice guides. It optimizes those implementations because the offer has already been standardized by Dell with our global scale and support. And then for system integrators, again, it improves their time to revenue because it's repeatable. So I'll spend the last few minutes that I have talking through our energy management blueprint. As Todd already mentioned, there are many different data silos in commercial buildings. As you know, these buildings are definitely getting smarter. But the challenge is each of these different smart elements aren't necessarily all connected back. There's lots of silos. And again, the Internet of Things is really about connecting up these different silos, being able to run analytical models on that and get the insight, um, and also integrate that into your IT systems as well. So here, multiple different silos, everything from your HVAC to your elevators um, to your security and surveillance solutions. All of those are separate silos today. And the goal of IoT is about integrating all of those together to ultimately get to new insights. It enables you to manage them more effectively, enables you to get to greater energy efficiency, um, as well as unlock all kinds of new business models as well within your building to save money, cut costs, uh, and get to energy efficiency. So within these blueprints that we developed, we put together best practice guides. And these are the five best practice steps that we recommend for implementing an energy management solution. We recommend that you really start with establishing clear goals. 
Um, the reason why that's so important is because your use case within your building might be very different from another building. One building might be focused on energy reduction or sustainability programs. Another building might be all about tenant um, uh, comfort. Uh, and so it's important there to figure out what your goals are. It's also important to establish the connection between operations technology and information technology to really be able to integrate these different systems together. From there, we recommend working with Blue Pillar to do a comprehensive site survey to really identify the different applications and data sources that already exist within your environment. Again, so many of these different machines and pieces of equipment are intelligent, they're smart, they're producing data today. This second step here is about figuring out what's available and unlocking those data sources so that you can increase the machine's potential. From there, it's about capturing it. And capturing it is actually more challenging than just connecting it all up. There's lots of different protocols, as you're aware, within your building, things like FactNet, um, as, as well as Modbus. And you have to be able to have a local gateway that can communicate in these different protocols and normalize this data, and then be able to get to real-time insights from all that data. But there's lots of other data that is already existing in your backend system. Um, maintenance logs, um, uh, utility data. It's important that you unlock that data here in step three as well and begin to understand what's available. From there, we move into figuring out what the right analytical model is for your environment. Again, there's cloud analytics and there's edge analytics. What Dell recommends is really distributing your analytics across that architecture figuring out what data should be at the edge, what should reside there, and what analytics should occur there, and what data makes more sense in the cloud, especially when you're integrating some of these IT systems where the data already resides in the cloud or in the data center. And finally, step five is acting on all of these analytics, getting to insights and operationalizing this within your business. In the cloud, you're able to um, aggregate multiple different buildings data and so that way you can look at a portfolio level view in the cloud. You can also do substantial levels of reporting, um, automating reporting around sustainability as well as getting to new levels of business intelligence. So this is our, blue, our blueprint for energy management. Again, when you see all of the uh, devices, the things on the left hand side, there are many different protocols that they communicate over, some already uh, IP protocols, Ethernet or over LAN, as, but then some traditional OT protocols like FactNet and Modbus as well. The gateway can consume all of that data uh, and ultimately normalize it so that you can get to insights from it. We offer the Dell Edge Device Manager, which is that uh, agent that would run on the gateway that enables your IT department or in, if you want the OT department to be able to manage this device. Uh, from the cloud uh, all the way down to the BIOS level, so a lot of control that you can get through that Dell Edge Device Manager. Here we're actually working with Windows as well, or Microsoft as well, Windows 10 IoT running on the gateway, and then the Blue Pillar Aurora Edge agent offers the OT data aggregation as well as the Edge analytics to be able to work with that perishable data, get to insights quickly, um, and cleanse a lot of the data instead of backhauling it all to the cloud. In the cloud, we've partnered with Microsoft Azure. Um, they offer the, uh, all of the computing in the cloud to be able to do machine learning. And then the Blue Pillar cloud application pulls in all those IP systems data, the utility bills, your historian, as well as unstructured data like maintenance logs. It integrates that data with your OT data. It offers that big data analytics so you can get to even more substantial insights and business intelligence. And then finally, the visualizations and reporting, because ultimately having visibility into the data is a whole other level of efficiency as well that you can get to. Ultimately, it's important just to have that visibility. So the visualization and reporting, and reporting happens there as well. So finally, as I wrap up, um, just to go back and reiterate, really the Dell difference here, it starts with this global scale and support you can ultimately know that you can deploy Dell globally in your buildings and, and trust that. Our trusted brand you know, goes back to our notebooks and our uh, enterprise computing devices. Dell's known as um, you know, the company that brought you the most secure PC, and now we're extending that out to the gateway. 
And finally, the project financing options, the ability for you to have the flexibility to lease or even do consumption-based financing, uh, all critical parts of the Dell difference in what we bring to the IoT industry. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Todd. Excellent. Well, thanks, Kevin. Um, I think that overview really, it really clearly describes why we're so excited to work with Dell. Kevin's impressive at the introduction with his 25 patents, but when you really dig into what they're doing and how Dell is evolving very, very rapidly within the world of IoT, it's clear that they're a market leader. So we're super excited to be working with them and with Microsoft to deliver our solutions across uh, facilities just like yours. So at this point, I think I'm, we're going to a poll. And this is, uh, this is really our shameless plug, which is please go ahead and vote. You should be able to vote right on your screen uh, and indicate if you would like Dell's IoT team to reach out and contact you directly. There's, uh, there's two answers to select from. You know which one is the right answer. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to leave this up on the screen. So feel free to take your time and, and select. And while we do that, I'm going to turn it over to Anne, who's going to facilitate questions and answers. Anne? Great. Yes, great. Thanks, Todd. And thank you, Kevin, as well, uh, for both of your presentations and uh, to our attendees for, for uh, participating with some of the questions you've sent in. And uh, with your, with your listening in. So, yeah, we do have time for uh, a few questions, and let's see. Uh, we'll start with kind of a, a broad one about the uh, Blue Pillar Aurora platform. Uh, and we had a listener asking, is this, the Aurora software platform read-only, uh, in effect, like a business intelligence platform, or can it also control? And as a second part to that question, if it can control, please explain in which way. Uh, they have an old building control software platform that needs to be replaced, and they want to know how that relates to the Aurora platform. So, so I'll take that, that one. This is Todd. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, um, great question, and I feel bad that we didn't clearly articulate that. So at the heart of Blue Pillar and the Aurora platform is basically SCADA capabilities to deliver control. Um, Yes, we can monitor, but more importantly, we have deep controls capabilities and really can control any asset that has a control requirement. And so when you think of it in terms of replacing a building management system, that could, the Aurora platform absolutely could be an option to do that. Um, but the bottom line is control is, is deep within our DNA and a key component of what we deliver. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Todd. So now we have a question, um, looks like it's aimed at Kevin. Uh, Kevin, when you had talked about the five steps to implementing energy management an energy management system, the fourth step you talked about was exploring different analytics models. Uh, could you expound on that point? Yeah, absolutely, and this goes back to uh, the architecture that we were talking through as well. It's, you know, the traditional idea of all of the sensors um, communicating back to the cloud and all of the analytics happening in the cloud is particularly challenging with all of this net new data. And so the point here in step four is really figuring out where is the right place for the analytics to take place. And to be honest, a big part of this has to do with the user experience that you want for the data. Um, some data will be consumed um, in the building or ultimately local dashboards coming off of the edge gateway itself. Other data that you want to be looking across the whole portfolio uh, is probably going to be published through the cloud. Um, and so having that user experience in mind also plays a big role in determining where you want to have the analytics. But that ultimately just comes back to how much compute do I need where to be able to process all this data that I'm now going to be pulling from these different machines. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and another question uh, about existing systems and uh, if, they, if, if a facilities person has already started on uh, some energy management or, or has some building automation in place, as most, most of us do, uh, is the Blue Pillar solution plug and play? 
how much customization is required to make it work? The, the goal is that it's very standardized um, because we think one of the requirements to make it effective is that it can be implemented very quickly and with, with low cost. It is very standardized. That said, how and what is controlled is very configurable. So I think I would define it as high, high degree of configuration, but standardized. Um, and I think what, what the question is getting at is, is actually at the root of most of the value that we deliver, which is that capability to do it quickly, low cost, and configurable. Thank you. And we'll, we'll hone in on uh, some reliability and potential outage uh, aspects, as, you were, uh, as you've noted earlier in the presentation. Uh, we have a listener asking, you had mentioned predictive analytics to track potential outages, and can you elaborate on that capability? Sure. So the outage can occur from a number of, of sources. It could occur from instability on the distribution system of the incoming power, it could occur in instability of equipment where the utility ties in. And so a lot of customers that utilize Blue Pillar around power reliability do it because they participate in utility-sponsored programs that give them communication around early warnings of potential grid issues. So we mentioned demand response as a Blue Pillar is an enabler of demand response participation where generation exists. That enablement allows our customers to participate in those programs more fully, which gives them visibility into reliability scenarios within either their utility or the broader energy grid in which they reside. Thank you. And, and, and if I can just add a little yes, bit on, on sure. that just real quick. So that's also part of the, the partnership with, uh, with Microsoft Azure here and their machine learning capabilities and, and the Aurora platform running on top of that really gives you the ability, once you have access to the data, um, it, it's very feasible to be able to predict these outages uh, based on that through machine learning and then be able to take action proactively within your building. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and it looks like we have time for just one more question as we're coming up against the clock. Uh, I did want to ask, uh, uh, Todd, you had mentioned uh, dynamic-based pricing within a net changing energy landscape in some markets early in the presentation. So in terms of dynamic-based pricing for those who, who may be uh, in those markets, can you just uh, expand on that a bit on how uh, your platform and IoT addresses that or helps with yeah. that? Absolutely. So there's a couple examples. One would be a traditional utility tariff where there is tiered pricing based on time of day. That's typically referred to as time of use pricing. California has usually three tiers depending upon the time of day. More extreme example might be in a market such as Texas, which is the ERCOT system operator where they literally have a different price each hour. And customers have the choice of buying based on that variability of price. When you have that scenario, it's, you know, it's debatable, but many would say that the lowest cost way to buy power over a long time horizon is on those variable price structures, but they can have budget uncertainty because the price varies. Well, if you have uh, IoT energy network in place and you can control devices, you can actually control energy consumption based on that price through a pricing signal they could easily enter into our Aurora network um, through our open protocols and deliver insight of not only that a high price is occurring, but actually deliver control signals to reduce energy consumption for the period of high price. So that's the world we're really moving into where people can take more advantage of dynamic pricing because while prices go up during the obvious hot times of day in Texas, they conversely go down in a very significant way and in many cases in many markets even go negative for a handful of hours e each year so that allows folks to take advantage of, of those scenarios and those market conditions. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Well, uh, with that, it looks like we are out of time, so I would like to uh, thank you, Todd and Kevin, again for your presentation, and of course to our audience for attending and for sending in your questions, and to Blue Pillar for sponsoring the webinar. If your questions were not addressed, please be assured that our speakers will address them offline. Uh, again, thank you for attending, and a recording of this webinar will be available online at facilityexecutive.com, as well as on the Blue Pillar, Pillar website at bluepillar.com. Thank you, and have a great afternoon.